Staying with legal matters, the High Court in Johannesburg has dismissed Tabo Besta and Dr. Nandipa Magudumana's urgent application to interdict the airing of a Showmax tracking Tabo Besta documentary. It means the documentary will be available on the streaming platform at 4 p.m. Now, the two were seeking to interdict the entertainment giant Multi Choices online subscription video on demand services. Showmax, uh, in fact, from uh, broadcasting that documentary tracking Tabo Besta. The four part series is expected to premiere later today. Besta and Magutu say their rights will be violated should the documentary be broadcast. Multi-choice oppose the application. Other news now at the Sawa. Parliament's Powers and Privileges Committee has recommended that EFF MP Sinao Dambo, Natasha Nklangwini and Motusi Mutwedi be a slap with severe penalties, include suspension without pay for a month and apologising in the House. The initiator, Penelope Magona Dano, recommended these sanctions, which the committee has accepted. Dano says that the EFF MPs are repeat offenders. They are part of the nine of, MP, of the MPs who were found guilty of contempt of Parliament after they were removed from the chamber during during President Sol Ramaphosa's budget vote speech and the debate in June of 2022. So to take this discussion a little further, political ramifications, of course, we're going to be looking uh, at this issue with political analyst Dr. Levi Ndor. A very good afternoon to, to you, Dr. Ndor, and thank you for joining us on the ACBC at this hour. Good afternoon to you, Lizelle. Good afternoon to the viewers at home. Thank you for having me. Talk to the recommended, recommended sanctions, which um, Parliament's Powers and Privileges Committee has now accepted as, the, uh, as of the 1st of April, citing that the EFF members are, in fact, uh, repeat offenders? Well, it appears to be the move that uh, this Parliament has, uh, has decided to use in terms of uh, punishing members that uh, would appear to have done something that is unacceptable on the part uh, of Parliament. And um, um, at the same time, there are those who might argue that um, this kind of punishments uh, could be heavy or too harsh. But uh, there are also those who might say this is the kind of punishment that is required because you actually need to have a situation where uh, members of parliament has to behave in a particular manner. What we need to wait and see is as to whether these are the kinds of punishments that will actually make members of parliament to behave in a particular manner, which will be uh, in the interest of parliament and progress in parliament, and as to whether it might not work in the best interest of parliament. But what we need to acknowledge is that in every institution, in every organization, any other establishment, there are rules and regulations that are supposed to be followed. And I think this committee could be saying, we need to start sending uh, our authority on members and make sure that they behave in a manner that uh, as a committee they deem fit or acceptable. Well, you're speaking about, um, you know, the impact that this is going to have going forward and also the message it sends from the Powers and Privileges Committee. Thank you for highlighting that. Um, I wonder if you could speak to the political ram uh, ramifications as a result and also on the issue of it being enough of a deterrent. Questions about a 30-day suspension without pay. Uh, is it befitting in relation to what's emerged? Well, it actually depends, as I indicated, uh, on where one stands. There are those, uh, in the words of um, uh, uh, Mr. Mutapo, the spokesperson of parliament, he said in the previous ruling that um, members of parliament and indeed the general public would frown when uh, certain behaviors are actually taking place in parliament and they felt that they need to come up with harsher sentences. At the same time, there could be those who might say, this is the kind of sentence that would appear to be very harsh because it actually uh, hits deep down on the pockets of those that are affected. But at the same time, I think generally, ordinary members uh, of the public would love to see progress, peace and stability happening in Parliament and indeed the work of Parliament going on without being disrupted unnecessarily. And it might have a potential 
to negatively affect how the ESF does its business. And uh, I think at the same time, one would expect that uh, if this strategy is actually being um, uh, fought by Parliament, maybe they'll have to develop another strategy. But equally, uh, the expectation would be that if there are rules and regulations, everybody has to abide by such, and if you don't, indeed the punishment has to follow. On the other side of the coin, we also saw reports from EFF Council Mfesane Gaziboto saying that the uh, committee applied double standards and didn't rule out the, uh, the possibility of approaching the courts for relief. What are the options on that front? It is unfortunate that um, this is the committee of parliament uh, which has to take decisions on behalf of parliament and all members of parliament are supposed to participate actively in this kind uh, of committees. But at the same time, in South Africa, we are lucky that if there is a decision taken and you feel you um, are grieved by that decision, you can still turn to our courts that are established to adjudicate. But if the previous instances would be something to go by, my view would be that um, the, the argument would be that the punishment is too much, it should be reduced, but I don't think uh, it could actually say that um, uh, this is the kind of behavior that should actually be uh, acceptable. But the, the, the fact of the matter is that rules and regulations are there and uh, people are supposed to abide by such.